Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're continuing to investigate distribution fitting and modeling stock returns with various distribution functions. However, we've got something slightly different on our hands today. We'll investigate mixture distributions. It might as well be the case that no single simplistic distribution functions, such as normal distribution, logistic distribution, Laplace distribution, or Cauchy distribution, uh, approximates stock returns well. However, a mixture of two distributions might do a better job. We'll investigate whether this is indeed the case today by applying the normal distribution, the Cauchy distribution, and their optimized mixture to 10 years worth of S&P 500 daily returns from year-end 2012 until year-end 2022. To start with, let's calculate daily returns by dividing index values today by index values yesterday and subtracting one, enforcing it throughout the whole sample. We can count how many observations we've got for our sample size. 2518, quite typical for 10 years worth of daily data. Then, as in all distribution fitting exercises, we'll need to sort our returns. For that, we can use the sort function, apply to the array of our returns, sort index one, sort order ascending, and sort by row. And we see that the lowest return um, in a day across the past 10 years with minus 12%, and the highest is plus 9%. And now we can start applying uh, the probability density functions for the normal, Cauchy, and the mixture distribution. For the normal distribution, we can use the Excel function, norm dist, refer to the sorted return, refer to the location parameter that we haven't inputted yet here, and the scale parameter, which is standard deviation for the normal distribution, and then for um, probability density function, we need to input zero and one for cumulative distribution function that we do not need yet. Again, it will return an error because we haven't filled those uh, cells in yet. So let's just assume some starting values of the location scale parameters. Let's say 0% and 1%. And enforcement throughout the sample, we'll get our probability density functions estimations for all 2518 observations. For the Cauchy probability density function, we'll need to use its functional form over here. So we'll refer to 1 over the Cauchy scale parameter b locked times pi times 1 plus scaled x squared. So we here refer to the sorted return again, subtract the location parameter of the Cauchy distribution locked divided by the scale parameter of the Cauchy distribution locked and squared. That completes the calculation. So let's input the location and scale parameters for Cauchy distribution. Let's keep them at 0% and 1% for now. We'll be able to optimize them using maximum likelihood later and enforce it throughout our sample. And for the mixture distribution, we can um, use the property that a probability density function is a derivative of a cumulative distribution function and uh, given the fact that our weighting, the mixture, is linear, we can simply assume some weight of the Cauchy distribution, let's say 50-50 for now. And in this case, the mixture probability density function will be the probability density function of Cauchy times its weight, blocked, plus the probability density function of the normal distribution times the remaining weight, which is 1 minus the weight of Cauchy. And then we enforce it throughout and our probability density function is ready to go. For the empirical distribution function, we simply need to use the sequence function. Uh, we need 2518 rows, our sample size, just one column. The start would be one over the sample size, as well as the step. And that nicely completes the entire uh, column. And in this graph, we can see the empirical distribution function plotted. Uh, what's remaining is to complete the cumulative distribution functions of the normal, Cauchy, and their mixture. For the normal distribution, we can simply copy the formula for the probability density, paste it here, 
and change 0 into 1 for the cumulative distribution function. Enforcing it throughout, we'll plot the normal distribution in orange. We see that the tails of the normal distribution are quite a bit thinner than the ones of the empirical distribution, which is a very uh, common stylized fact. Uh, the tails of the normal distribution are not heavy enough for modeling many real-world phenomena, especially financial markets. For the Cauchy cumulative distribution function, we can just use the functional form, 1 over pi times the arctangent of scaled x, so we refer to the sorted return, minus the Cauchy location locked, divided by the Cauchy scale locked, and finally we just add a half. That calculates the Cauchy uh, cumulative distribution function, which in this application is plotted in grey and has notably fatter tails than the empirical distribution. This is where the motivation for using mixture distribution lies. One distribution has too thin for tails and the other has too fat for tails. So maybe something average, something in between, will fit just fine. And to test that, let's simply multiply the CDF of Cauchy by the weight of Cauchy locked and add the CDF of the normal distribution times the remaining weight. And we see the mixture distribution. Um, right now we've got 50-50, so it's right in between the normal and the Cauchy. Uh, however, we haven't optimized the parameters yet. Perhaps uh, allowing them to vary um, using the maximum likelihood procedure would generate a better fit. So let's start with optimizing the normal distribution. For that, we obviously need to calculate the log likelihood. That would be the sum of natural logarithms of normal probability densities. However, to make our optimization smoother, let's input the if error function on top of the log, and if the value is too small, we'll just return minus 1000. Again, a very common uh, way of avoiding errors in your solver optimization. And now we can just drag it across to get log likelihoods for all three of our probability density functions. And even here, we see that the log likelihood of the uh, normal Cauchy mixture is higher than log likelihoods of individual distributions. Will it stay the same after we perform the optimization? Well, let's see. First, let's optimize our normal distribution. For that, we can go to Data Solver and maximize our normal log likelihood by changing the normal distribution location and scale parameters. We can untick the make unconstrained variables non negative box because the location parameter can be negative and click solve. We have now optimized the location and scale parameters of the normal distribution 0.05% and 1.11%, and the log likelihood has improved. What about the goodness of fit? For that, let's use uh, the conventional Kolmogorov Smirnov test. For that, we need to multiply the square root of our sample size locked by the maximum deviation between the empirical distribution function and the cumulative distribution function. And here, as we seek to measure deviations in both um, directions, let's input the absolute function on top. And that generates a Kolmogorov Smirnov statistic, and by dragging it across, we'll calculate those for all three cumulative distribution functions. And the p-value for the kolmogorov smirnov can be calculated just as the exponent of negative kolmogorov smirnov statistic squared. We can see that, as for now, none of the distributions fit the data well. Uh, all of the kolmogorov smirnov stats are significant at 1%, meaning that there are substantial deviations from the empirical distribution function. But what about the Cauchy uh, best fit? For that, Let's change our solver specification to refer to the Cauchy uh, maximum likelihood, and our variables to change would be the Cauchy location and scale parameters. Having clicked solve, we'll arrive at the optimal parameters in no time. We see that the Cauchy location and scale parameters have now changed, and despite the tails still being quite a bit fatter than the ones of the empirical distribution function, the p-value for the kolmogorov smirnov um, statistic um, is um, not astronomically small, it's still smaller than 1%, meaning that the data does not fit the distribution well, 
However, it's an improvement. What about the mixture? Let's now change our solver specification again, optimize the log likelihood for the mixture distribution, and change all of the location and scale parameters, as well as the weight of the Gaussian distribution that we pick for the mixture. And we see that we have successfully identified a very well-fitting mixture distribution with a weight of Cauchy uh, being slightly smaller than 50%, but still surprisingly high. It's a non-negligible weight of a very heavy tail distribution with infinite mean and undefined variance. Uh, this is a very common stylized fact in mixture distributions that even a tiny weight in uh, a pathological heavy tail distribution such as Cauchy leads the variance of the mixture distribution to be infinite or undefined as well, which has non-trivial implications for portfolio management and risk management. What we are most interested in, however, is that the mixture distribution that we have specified now, and it is plotted in yellow, is very close to the empirical distribution in blue. Some deviations can only be observed um, over here, near the hump of the distribution, and the tail is very well proxied by our mixture. This is further confirmed by the high p-value of the kolmogorov smirnov test, um, given that there are no significant deviations uh, from the empirical distribution function, as long as the mixture distribution is concerned. And this is an application of mixture distributions, most notably normal Cauchy mixtures, uh, to modeling stock returns. This approach has multiple applications for risk management. For example, you can use uh, mixtures to calculate value at risk. You can also uh, change which distributions you want a mixture of. Um, again, you can do a Laplace Cauchy mixture, a normal Laplace mixture, sky's the limit here. Only your imagination can limit um, the calculations and models that you will uh, do. And mixture distributions are very flexible and uh, very intuitively understandable. Um, instrument for modeling stock returns and any other data sets. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you'd like me to report. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supports on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.